Good morning all. Uh, this is a little PIC microcontroller demo board which I bought on eBay and I'm going to use it as the basis for my PIC microcontroller machine code, uh, that is assembly language programming tutorials. The reason I've chosen this board is because it's uh, easily available on eBay. It's not terribly expensive. Um, it has a good old-fashioned 12F675 microcontroller, so there are no complexities here. It's all really easy stuff. But this board does have a few issues. So this video is going to be about solving the issues that this board has. And also it's going to be a general shopping list of things you may need uh, for the PIC programming assembly language tutorials. So let's start with this board, uh, which also comes with this cable, which is uh, a USB type A to a 2.1 millimeter plug, which plugs in there. So that's quite convenient for powering this thing. Uh, let's find one of these on eBay. So here is uh, a five volt PIC 12F675 development board. Now this one is being sold by Alice110 1983. I'm not picking Alice because I have any particular affinity, but she's likely to have everything we need. And uh, Alice's prices are good. So this one is $6.45 free shipping. Now, like a lot of the Chinese sellers, Alice is away till February the 5th, but uh, well, that's not long to wait now. Now, the first issue with this board is this six pin JST connector, which doesn't interface uh, very easily to the PIC programmer. This is a PIC kit three. Not only does that not fit in there properly, but that would actually have to be that way round. Now I did modify this one, uh, but that means that the PIC kit is upside down and it still doesn't fit terribly well because the power connector can't fit in there at the same time as the programmer. So I reckon the best way to deal with this is to get uh, a six pin JST XH connector. XH means it's 2.5 2.54 millimeters pitch, that's 0 0.1 inch. Uh, cut that short, wire it to uh, a standard 0.1 inch pitch header, and then we've got a short link cable. So we don't need to do that mod. We can stick with the original JST connector to go from the board to the programmer, and the programmer will be the right way up. So here's a listing for 10 pieces. Now you can type six pin in, but you don't find much. It's better to type in 5S1P, that's to do with balanced charging. Uh, this says they're silicon, they're not, all the rest of it. JST-XH is very important. So uh, this one, you do get 10 pieces, which you're not going to need, but it's not too bad value. Uh, $2.99, oh, there is a 59 cents shipping charge. And this is from Sassi River 2009. I've bought from them before, they seem pretty reasonable. So that's the PIT kit uh, development board and the 6-pin or the 5S1P uh, cable. Now I'll assume you've got some of these pin headers. If you haven't, they're relatively easy to find. I will put links to all the items uh, in this shopping list down in the description below. Okay, next we're going to need a programmer. Now should you buy the PIT kit 2, this is a clone of course, or the PIT kit 3? Well, the software that I intend to use, the IDE, the Integrated Development Environment, supports both of these, but it's old so software, it's obsolete software. So if you think that you might move on beyond this tutorial series and use Microchip's uh, new IDE, MPLAB X, definitely get the PIT Kit 3. It is a little bit more expensive. We'll have a look at those these two in a moment. If you just fancy doing this tutorial series and you don't think you'll progress uh, beyond this or use of the uh, obsolete software, then by all means get the PIT kit too. It is a little bit cheaper, but it's not supported by Microchip currently. So here's uh, the PIT kit 2, uh, microcontrollers, PIT kit 2, PIT kit 2, and all that stuff. Uh, this one is $8.40 free shipping. This one is from Alice. 110-1983, and you do get these cables with it. So yes, the pickets come with these uh, short six-pin cables. Now you might think uh, that that actually would be perfectly usable plugged into there, 
but actually it's not a very convincing fit. I think it probably just about makes contact, but uh, I don't particularly like it. You could, I suppose, risk it and not make up this uh, six pin JST connector, but I think the JST is a more convincing fit in there. So uh, I can't remember which one of these came with which. Also, when I bought the pit kits, I got one long blue cable and one very short blue cable. Again, I can't remember which came with which programmer. And uh, here's a pit kit three uh, programmer. This is also from Alice 110 1983. This, as I say, is a little more expensive, $11.93, free shipping. And again, this comes with uh, cables, the six pin DuPont cable with those uh, male to female converters and a USB type A to mini. Now, another possibility, um, if you really don't want to be making up this six pin cable, is it might be possible to lever this connector, the plastic part of it, um, away from the board, thus just leaving the six pins. And then you might find that the DuPont connector actually connects in there uh, reasonably well without the additional millimeter or so of the plastic sitting uh, on those pins. So you might be able to bodge along with what you receive with a pit kit and uh, taking that plastic shell off the board. So I'm just going to make up the uh, little interface cable, uh, six pin JST to six pin header. Uh, today's sponge is a pink sponge with a Maltese cross shape. So I've cut these uh, wires short now to strip them. Should do them all to a consistent length. This thing has a length adjustment thing on it. So let's do them all to five millimeters and then probably I'll actually um, tin these and then cut them shorter because they're not going to require five millimeters to solder onto there. So let's get these whoops, done. So just tin these. Now on my uh, connector, uh, yes, VPP is pin one. So on this one, it's green. So on that, I'm going to put a red bit of heat shrink and on the other five, a black bit so that I've got a pin one indicator. Uh, well, I don't think these are silicon sleeved. I'm pretty sure they're PVC, but they haven't receded quite as badly as some sleeving recedes when you heat up the wires. These didn't seem to recede much at all so they must be fairly high temperature rated. Right I want to break off six of these and I find it works best if you bend it just a little way and then bend it back the other way so that you snap both sides equally otherwise, otherwise what tends to happen is the plastic shatters and you don't get that nice neat break off. Right the thing which uh, we always forget don't we to put the heat shrink on the bits of wire before we start soldering because that's always the way isn't it you start soldering oh I forgot the heat shrink right they're all soldered so let's bring the heat shrink up and uh, use the heat gun on it yeah not brilliantly uh, equal heat shrink lengths but never mind now I'm trying to put a little uh, half twist in this wire and a little bend so that when I plug that JST into that connector, uh, the programmer can sit there with the red heat shrink going to pin one, and that's done. Now the next thing is we need to modify this board because there's a bit of a design error on here. So when you're programming the microcontroller, a high voltage, I think it's 13 volts, is put on VPP and that runs down to GP3. GP3 is either a general purpose uh, port IO pin or it's the programming voltage or it's master reset. Now master reset has I think a capacitor and a resistor connected to GP3 and uh, VPP uh, is such that it doesn't or shouldn't have any extraneous components connected to this pin when it's being programmed. The problem is VPP comes in here 
and the master reset components are attached at this point here. So you can't disconnect them with this link. So what we really need to do is cut VPP, which conveniently is this little track up here near the potentiometer, cut that and then run a wire underneath. Now I'm going to show you that wire on this one because I've done some bodge mods on that one and it won't be very clear what's happening. So we run a wire from VPP, there it is, so it's there, down to the inner pin of the link here. In fact, you could run the wire from VPP down to uh, this pin of the chip, which is pin four, otherwise known as GP3. But the important thing is that when we cut that track on the top, it's this track here, and I've cut it there, you can see, up near the potentiometer, we need to run a wire from VPP down to pin four of the chip or the inner pin of these two pins on the jumper selectors. So I'm going to do that mod now to this board because I haven't yet modified that track which runs down alongside the potentiometer. What I have done is I've fitted a connector on the underside and put some mod wires on there. So I won't be showing the underside of this board. Uh, this was another attempt to get the programmer to sit the right way around. And it is rather elegant because it fits like that. Um, but it does require a fairly uh, substantial amount of uh, wire mods on the underside. So I'll cut the track on the top here so that you can see what's happening there. And then I'll switch to the other board uh, to show how the mod wire is attached to, well, you can see it here, but uh, let's actually do it now. So the first step is to cut this track, just cut a hole in it, cut a break in it, uh, that runs down from VPP down alongside this potentiometer. Now I've only got a big knife, so it's going to be a little unwieldy, but let's give that a try. Right, so I've just got to cut two cuts across that track. Being careful not to cut off all my fingers. So that's two little slice marks, and I've got to lift out the bit of copper that sits between them and I think that's done it without doing too much damage to the board. Let's have a closer look. So yeah there's the track running from VPP down the board and I think you can see with, by putting this torch behind it that I have successfully cut that track so now I need to link it up on the back. So on the underside of the board it's actually this uh, pin well, if you've got the connector at the top, to the far right, which will be the one that connects to pin one on the programmer. Ignore the square pin on the other end. That's not pin one in this case. So we need to connect a wire from there. And you can just use a bit of um, insulated wire. Come down and either connect it to the inner pin on this jumper header. The jumper header goes across there or run it down to pin four of the chip. Pin one of the chip is up there, pin four is down here. So you can either go to the inside of the jumper or to pin four. Right, now let's see what uh, effect that's gonna have. I'll remove all the jumpers other than the one that's on GP3, which is the master clear or reset or GP3 pin, or indeed VPP when you're doing a program. Okay, so what it means now is uh, if we have difficulties programming, you can probably leave this jumper in some of the time because some of the time it seems to work and it does seem to program, even with that resistor and capacitor connected to the VPP line. But if it won't, if you're having problems, if it's saying I can't see the chip or various other error messages, simply remove this jumper, take it off, the one that's on GP3, and now VPP, we know is connected with that piece of wire from the pin on the header directly to the inner connector on this uh, jumper or, or GP3. So it's connected to the chip. The uh, reset components, the capacitor and resistor that are connected on the outside of this jumper are now disconnected on this length of uh, copper track here and it's cut there. So that totally isolates the reset components from the programming pin. So that's the board modified, track cut, piece of wire added on underneath, a uh, little link cable made up and uh, the programmers and all the other bits purchased. Now, what about the IDE software?
And for that, we need to come to uh, microchip.com forward slash development hyphen tools. And that brings you to uh, this page here. And down in this list, there is a downloads archive. So let's click that. And that should give us a list of all the old versions of software. Now, just one thing to mention here, um, MP Lab, the old version, not MP Lab X. So let's scroll down. MP Lab IDE archives. And if we go right to the bottom of there, we get to MP Lab IDE V 8.92. Now, I do have to point out that the old MP Lab only runs under Windows. So if you're Linux or Mac, or both Mac and Linux, but you don't have Windows, then I'm afraid you're a bit stuck. Now, if you are absolutely desperate to follow this PIC programming tutorial and you don't have Windows, you can install MP Lab X, which is their current, currently supported uh, IDE. Buy the PIT Kit 3 because it doesn't support the PIT Kit 2 and muddle along. You'll have to teach yourself how to use MP Lab X because I can't offer any help on that, I'm afraid. So that's it. That's the shopping list. All the items uh, you need to get for these PIC programming tutorials the board, uh, the modifications to the board, the little link cable, choose between one of these two programmers, and download the IDE software. And once you've done all that, we're ready to start programming the PIC in assembly language. Cheerio.